Hi and welcome to Poly Originals with Fiona Abel-Smith. For today's session I thought we'd have a bit of fun with a nice bright cane called the Diamond Burst Cane because obviously you've got all these shooting out colours from the middle. We're going to actually make some little drop earrings so I'll show you a quick and easy way to make double sided earrings but a few tips and techniques so you can really get lovely matching patterns on both sides. So let's start with the equipment that we need. The equipment we need for today's session is fairly straightforward. You need a polymer clay blade, I sometimes refer to these as tissue blades, a craft knife, a polymer clay roller, this is just a small one, any size will do, some form of smoothing tool or something to sort of roll between seams when we put our slices together. This is a small cable needle, it's about four millimetres wide. Do you, when we're using our cutters and to make ourselves a little template, you'll need a small piece of paper, scissors, pencil and some tape. If you're making earrings like me, then you need a couple of small jump rings and some earring findings and just a pair of jewellery pliers. If your cutters are sharp, then I just have a piece of board that I just use to press down on the cutters to save my hands. When we're putting our slices of clay together, I'm just going to use a quite large piece of baking parchment, wax paper, tracing paper, pa baking um, sheet, anything like that will work well for this. Um, it's just big enough that I can put quite a nice size of um, veneer on that later on. When reducing my cane, and just to work on generally, I'll be using a laminated measuring sheet. This one is freely available from www.printablepaper.net um, and this one is the four squares to one inch and as I say I've just laminated it but feel free to use centimetres instead if you prefer. You'll also need just a little small piece of cling film or the plastic wrap just enough to go over your veneer um, before we cut down through it and we'll come on to cutters next. When making earrings one of the hardest things to do is to get both sides to look the same so one of the easiest ways to do that is to use a cutter that is symmetrical and simply cut it in half. So for instance that would be the shape of earring you'd end up with. Or that, or that, or that. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to choose a cutter and as long as it's symmetrical we can use it for the earrings. Have a look around and see what you can find in your cutter shape. Some of these petal ones that come from the um, cake decorating shops are really quite good and they make interesting half shapes for earrings. So just have a look in your box. Say so anything that's symmetrical will work well for today's project. What I'm planning to do is have a few of them to hand when I've done my sheet of veneer and then see which one works best with the pattern and the size that it comes out. Whilst I'm going along I will use wet wipes and tissues to keep my hands and equipment clean. Um, when I bake my piece I will bake on a small tile. I also have some aluminium foil which I simply tent the whole um, tile in when I bake so that it protects the clay should the oven spike during baking. And I will also be using a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use, although if you don't have one of those simply roll your clay when I put it through the pasta machine. So let's move on to the clay we're using for today's session. For today's earrings I'm using Primo clay, but all brands of known polymer clay will work well for this technique. So for I've got the same amount for all of these different colours. So I've got white, sunshine, wasabi, turquoise, ultramarine, purple pearl and black. And for all of these ones I've actually just cut them into separate pieces. The black can stay in one and condition all of these in their separate amounts starting with the lighter colours and working your way up until you end up with a nice sort of round sausage or log shape about sort of that big. And for each of these colours there's half an ounce or 14 grams of clay. If you want some additional hints and tips about conditioning clay I do have a video covering that and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. I will generally condition the clay on a medium setting of my pasta machine, so setting number 3 and on my machine 0 is thick and 9 is thin and I will condition all of these separately but as I say all of them are going to roll into logs apart from the black which will be a single sheet and I'll bring you back when I'm at that stage. So all my colours are nicely conditioned. I've put all the colours into little um, logs or rolls and the black I've just put through on setting number three. So all we're going to do now is we're going to do a series of Skinner blends. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the blue into the turquoise into the wasabi. Then we're going to do one, the pearl into the white into the yellow. 
and then we're going to do one with all six colours. So continuing those, but doing it that way around. Okay, so I'm going to put those two to one side for now and just concentrate on doing one. But having done one, we're going to do exactly the same with the other two. So all I'm doing is I'm putting the colours next to each other in that um, grouping and just giving them a roll. Because whilst I want to skin a blend, I don't want the colours to mould or meld into each other too much, just slightly. So having done it so that they're joined, I'm going to put it through setting number two of my pasta machine that way down, just the once, and then come back. So having done it just once, I'm now going to fold it and just skew ever so slightly, so hardly at all, but you can see they're just overlapping very slightly the colours, so that now when I keep putting it back through the pasta machine, fold first, folding up, fold first, folding up, will eventually get a nice um, graduation of blends with all those colours. If, like me, you've got any air bubbles, whenever you see those, just pop them, either with your nail or with a little... Um, needle point, something like that. Um, if you're unsure how to do Skinner Blends, I do have a tutorial with a few tips and techniques, and I will put a link to that in the details below. So what I'll do now is I'll put that through, get the blend nicely done, and I'll come back when that one is finished. So there we have the blend ready, and as you can see, I've still got the distinct colours with just a little bit of blending in between them. So I'm simply going to fold it in half, because it's a rough even shape and then I'll put it back through on the pasta machine the dark side first first time on the same setting as I've already got it on so that's setting number two on my machine there we go and now I'm going to put it through the thinnest usable setting on the pasta machine on my machine I can go straight down to setting number nine which is my thinnest but on yours if necessary go down each setting at a time because I'm using Primo it tends to stick to itself more than the Fimo so I'll still put it through the dark end first and I'll still be holding on to this end as I put it through but every couple of turns I will stop and with my free hand actually pull the um, strip out to make sure it's not concertinaing and sticking to itself under the pasta machine and I'll end up with a nice long strip and I'll bring you back when I've got that. So there is our nice long strip but because it's Primo I'm going to keep it nicely spread out like that um, but same as we would normally do we're now going to concertina it from one end working all the way down to the other end and this time I'm going to do it about half an inch about one and a half centimeters wide. Okay, there we go. The ends, ends are always untidy, so I'm just going to press down, neaten it up, make it into a rough sort of oblong shape. Not overly worried because we're going to change the shape in a moment. So we're now going to do exactly the same with those three colours, and that should end up the same size and shape as this one. And then exactly the same with these six, although of course we'll end up with a piece twice the size of that one. So I'll get those done and I'll bring you back when we're finished. So there are our three blends already done and put up into um, little blocks of nicely patterned clay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my black clay and I've got it so it's longer than two of those and I'm now going to put it through a th very thin setting that way down um, so I've got enough to partially cover all three of these. So for me I'm putting it on my thinnest setting so that will be setting number nine. So taking my big one and one of the smaller ones I'm simply going to cut some of the black clay, the right size to go around the outside. Neaten off one end. Starting with the large one, you need to decide which end you want to be the larger point of your triangle and which point you want to be the point. So I'm going to have the point at this end. And I'm simply going to take this. So whereabouts the, the yellow starts? Wrap it around the blue and then I'm going to cut off again where the yellow is. That's one bit done. And similarly with this, I'm going to work halfway down, go around the darker end, so the purple on this one, chop off, and then the same with the green. So start where the turquoise is, go over the blue end, and again where the turquoise is. Okay, so we're now just going to change the shape of all of these to make our actual cane. 
these two are going to be exactly the same. So a work on one to start with, and what I want is like a long, thin, sort of almost like a teardrop shape, but very sort of squashed in. So my lighter side without the black is going to be the point. So I'm just going to pull that up to start with. And then I'm going to press down the whole thing, because I want it quite nicely flattened. pull it out slightly and then with my fingers I'm just going to round off this edge and then give it a slight roll. And then repeat exactly the same with the second one. When you've done that, chop down equally through both of them and you're going to put them together so that they overlap but so that the lighter colours go towards the middle. Squish the two ends together and that's your first part of the cane done, put to one side. This piece we're going to force into a triangular shape with this being the point and that being the flat. So I'm just going to again pinch across the purple at the top force it into a triangular shape drop it in two put the two halves together and repeat keeping the purple at the top push down so we've got a triangular shape that we can cut in half. Cut in half again. Now this time we're going to keep pink as being the point and we're sort of going to bend up the blue tops and as you do that automatically and using your finger to reinforce it you get that sort of shape. Make sure it's the same on both ends and what you're looking for is something that's roughly the same height as the piece you've got. Now you can either put it in that end or you can put it in the pink end Press those together. Let's make this slightly more of a square shape. If you heard a noise there, that was the dog snoring in the background. So I'm going to put that in. Let's flatten this down so it's roughly the same height. So that bit sits in one of the inserts. Let's say you can either put it pink end in or you can put it blue end in. I'm going to put it in blue end in. Take the rest of your back, roll it into a nice sausage shape. And take probably about half of it, enough to fit a nice round shape in where that second groove would be, and then curl that around. That's rough shape of our piece, and what we're going to do now, that's a corner, that's a corner. Obviously, same on the underside, even you can't see it's the nighty, that's a corner, that's a corner. And by pushing in, we will end up making more of a square shape. So you can start to see that actually this with the black is also going to be a corner. And the two blue bits together there are going to be a corner as well. Once you've got it more or less going, keep on elongating it. Forcing it into that sort of square shape. Now if you wanted to have a nice 
big broad pattern you could simply leave it at this stage and chop it into squares and you'll get a nice kaleidoscope pattern but I just want to change it up a bit and get a, a more detailed pattern out of this one shape so I'm going to make one of these sides flat now we could have done this right at the stage before we put this into a square but you get a slightly different pattern doing it this way um, obviously experiment do what you want to do if you want to do it at that stage go for it but at this stage this is the stage at which I'm going to um, squash it flat and rather than making it one of the obvious ones being the pink ones I'm actually going to go for the one of the non-obvious so the one towards the black side I'm very simply going to press down and flatten that side off until we end up with a triangular cane now at the moment it should hopefully be fairly right angled triangle and I'm trying to increase that by making sure that when I press it down this side is completely top upright and that side's upright because when we've got it just a little bit longer we are going to chop it in half and put both sides together have a look down make sure you're sort of matching up as best you can where all those lines meet and then we've ended up with what well should be a pretty square cane and then we're just going to press on and reduce that as a square cane pressing into the sides and making it smaller as we go until we get to a size that's about one inch across each of these faces so I'll fast forward and I'll bring you back when I've got that bit done Once I'm close to the size, then I will very carefully pinch down all of the points just to make them nice and sharp so that when we put all of our kaleidoscope slices together, they join nicely. Give the piece a roll so that if you've got any fingerprints or finger marks in from doing the edges there or the corners, you get rid of those. And then go back and recheck to make sure it is the right size. Chop off the sorted end and you start to see the pattern that you are going to get. So it is an exceedingly hot day here today. It's about 34 degrees at the moment and I am sweltering and so is the clay. So in theory I should go and put this, either leave it for a couple of hours or go and put it in the fridge for a few minutes. I am however going to swap over to a brand new blade. I'm going to get myself a wet wipe and every time I take a slice I'm going to wipe the blade. So I'm going to chop off 16 slices of um, not too thick but I'll, I'll say I'll see how it goes and how distorted this gets what I might do every couple of slices is take this off and re-put it back into a square shape just so I don't get too much distortion however to make it easy for me to match the pattern I am going to keep it this way up you can of course rotate it and take a slice and that keeps it more of a square shape but then it's slightly harder to um, put your pieces together There are my cut slices. You can see I've done them in just groupings of three and the last one turned out to be a four. So I'm going to take, so I'm going to take my piece of um, baking sheet. I've put the rest of my black clay on a thin setting, so setting number nine. So I just want this as a backdrop for putting my slices on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start matching up the slices. Because I kept them the way around, I should be able to take two and match them up together. So decide if there's a particular bit you like best. I think I quite like in this shape. So I'm going to do it starting with that piece down. And then just in their pairs, match your two pieces together and put them down next to each other. 
if the clay has become misshapen with the blunt end of your blade and obviously being very careful in fact saying that I'm going to put this sharp one away going back to my normal less sharp blade um, using the blunt side and keeping my fingers well away from the sharp bit I'm just going to very gently neaten and straighten off those few slices so that when we add the next ones on it's easier to match them same as before match your two slices and this time they'll go the other way up if again they are uneven exactly the same as those before you match them just straighten them out and continue to build up your pattern until all 16 slices are in place Once all your slices are in place with the um, end of your cable needle or knitting needle or whichever other smoothing tool you're using, I'm just going to gently go over the seams just so that if you've got any differences in heights with your slices or any gaps, it just fills them in. And I'll do one direction first and then turn the sheet round and do the other. Once that's all done with a nice clean roller, just roll over until everything's lovely and smooth. I will generally at this stage again with that blunt end straighten up or neaten up any of the sides because we want this to be as symmetrical a shape as possible for doing the earrings. So that's why I'm taking the time to do all these um, adjustments. I will then chop off the excess of the underneath black clay. And see what we've got left. Now really I'm looking for something that's fairly square in shape. So I will quite often at this stage pull this out to make it the right size and shape and again give it a roll make sure it's nice and even and flat and then and now I'll cover the whole thing with a piece of cling film or the plastic wrap so that as we start putting our cutters down and messing around and seeing what shape we want to do and everything else we're not going to get any dirt or any marks on the clay. So now it's a case of having a look at all your cutters, seeing what you've got, what shapes you want to and what fits in well for the size. So whatever we're doing we're going to cut in, cut in half for the earrings and I'll bring you back to that in just a minute. So we're looking for something that's going to fit but not be too big and something that you can at least get two from the same sheet. See that one fits perfectly. That's quite a good one. That's a fraction too large. Just go through until you find one that you like. So I think I like that one because that's a nice size for the sheet that we've got and you can actually get several cutouts from that one. So once you've decided, and if you haven't done this before, take your sheet of paper, take your pencil and just draw around the inside of your cutter. Now this will be smaller than our eventual cutter shape, but don't worry too much. Cut carefully around the line. And fold this in half. Two reasons for doing that. 
one, as you'll see in a minute, it'll act as a block. And secondly, it's doubly, doubly make sure that you've got something that is completely symmetrical, that you're not, your cutter isn't going to be different one size to the other. Once you're happy, a little piece of tape. Just tape where you cut closed. And now, rather than trying to use your cutter to see exactly what the pattern is inside because it's quite difficult to do you can use this as a template instead and if you see something that you like the look of you might think oh yes that looks like looks nice put the half on to see what it's actually going to look like as an earring because sometimes the whole shape looks better than the half shape so i quite like that for instance Whereas it does look different when it's going that way. So have a good look round, see what you like the look of. Don't think of just the obvious. And when you find something you like, I think I did actually like that one down there. quite like that one then you can just simply substitute your cutter now take a bit of time to make sure that it's exactly equal both sides so I'm going to pull this towards me now out of camera shot so I can really make sure that I've got this nice and symmetrical so I'm looking at all the different points seeing how much of the pattern is going inside the cutter when you're happy it's as symmetrical as possible just give a little press down and if your cutter like this one is one of the sharp ones then I simply use the bit of wood press down to give myself a nice cut through shape. Having done one, let's do something different to do the other side of the earrings. Now obviously I could get more shapes out of this but just to show you what we're doing today I will remove the rest of the sheet. I'll put that to one side so I can do other things with it. As another option, you could always just take four squares once you know how the pattern works and just put four squares down if that's sufficient um, size for your cutter. And then obviously, just as we did before, put the cling film over, make sure that is in the perfect central place and then chop down and get your pattern that way. So whichever way you do it, you should end up with two sides for your earrings and then it's a question of cutting down straight and evenly through both pieces. Now I've worked out with this particular one that if I start at the middle point here of the measuring sheet it goes more or less exactly to one of the squares there. So I now know that is placed in exactly a straight line. So chop down and you have the two perfectly matched sides to your earrings. And I'm going to repeat for this piece. So all you need to do now is get your little jump rings, get one side of each of the earrings so that when you put them together the black goes towards the middle and then find where the join is in your jump ring and join down, fit that between the points of your earrings. the side of your needle. Just create enough of a gap inside the jump ring that you can fit the earring finding on and then very gently just roll around the sides of each of them to make sure you've got a nice join. Now again because we use the black as the underneath colour it will match in with the patterns we've got on the earrings and we could also have used any of the colours we've used in the design and that would also have looked so as part of the pattern as well. So repeat with your second one. Put them next to each other to make sure that you haven't pulled one out of shape more. That one could do being a little bit longer. When you're happy that they're as even as you're going to get them, simply put them on the tile you're going to bake on. Tent the whole piece in aluminium foil to protect it should the oven spike during baking and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And I'll bring you back when these ones are done and we'll put on the earring findings and our earrings will be finished. So here are our pieces. 
all baked and finished and I have just sanded and polished them, just polished on a, a buffing wheel. Um, and that one I've already put the finding on. This one, just simply open up the ring on your earring finding, put that the right way around, pop it on, twist it back up so it finishes. And there you have your finished pieces. As you know, I always like to do at least one more colour combination, so here's another one for you. Looks quite different until you look carefully and see actually you've got the same diamond but the burst looks different here um, in the middle because I've got very much white here so you haven't got the same mix of colours as you've got there. So either embrace that and do it or avoid it, so that's something to look at when you're mixing your colours. So this one, the, the combination I did for one of the bits on the inside was white, the sunshine yellow and the turquoise and then for the other one we actually went 18 karat gold red and bronze and then of course I put all six colours together to do the full extra bit that goes for the bit that's in the middle goes from one colour all the way through to the other and the cutter I used for this one was one of the flower ones and that's given us a set of earrings like that so that's the project finished Here's the veneer you can make, so obviously you can do whatever you like with that. And here's the earrings we made, and then here are the earrings with the second colour scheme. I hope you enjoyed that one. The diamond burst cane with drop earrings. A nice simple cane, and as I say, quite a nice simple way to make some good drop earrings. And just experiment, see what cutters you've got, see what shapes you've got, and just have fun with this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and for those of you who subscribe, a special thank you, because I really do appreciate it. That's it for this one. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.